For step-by-step -step instructions and pictures, visit RAV4Gen5.com. This is the 2020 Toyota RAV4 Adventure. And in this video, we're going to install a subwoofer. This is compatible with all trim levels of the Toyota RAV4. This is a unique subwoofer in that it hides inside your spare tire. I purchased an 8-inch rock-filled ghost that we'll install for this vehicle. It comes with the 12-volt power wire, RCA cables that we won't use, this is our wire harness that we'll connect everything to. We have our some wire loom for organization, the blue remote wire, the remote that goes by the driver, uh, speaker wires, ground wires, and some hardware for mounting. I'm really excited about this install because as we all know, the base is the main thing that's missing inside of the basic six speaker system. So first thing, we need to clear everything out, double check that everything fits. Obviously it does, otherwise I wouldn't be recording and uploading this video. This styrofoam spare tire retainer cannot be reinstalled after you install the subwoofer because the subwoofer obviously takes its place. Over here I'm trying to align the long bolt that comes with this subwoofer down into the uh, frame of the vehicle. So with the cover back on, we'll take a look at how much space and clearance there is underneath. We can definitely put this shelf back on the top level, but the bottom level will be blocked by the subwoofer. We have our 12 volt power. We have our ground wire connection over here. We have a blue wire that will send signal for the subwoofer to turn on. We have RCA connectors that we're not going to use in this installation. And then we have the four speaker wires that we will use to tap into the rear door speakers. For demonstration purposes of this video, I'm going to first install all the wires without going through the panels or the trim, just to show you how things are connected. Afterwards, I will go through the process of getting it hidden and uh, behind the panels or the pillars and all that stuff. First we have our speaker wires that we will connect to the door. I'll do a temporary connection directly to the door speakers um, before we go through the pillars. So I'm going to have it that the red wire will be my positive and the darker wire will be my negative. From my last video I installed these three-way lever nut connectors. One of them will be used for the head unit. One of them is going to be used for the door speakers and the third one is going to be used for the subwoofer. So we'll first connect our positive and negative for the right door, then I'll come across and do the other door. In one of my other videos, we upgraded the door speakers to some JBLs. Check that video out so you know which one is your positive and negative wire. Back at the wire harness, I'm adding some more lever nut connectors so that we can connect temporarily to the wire harness of our subwoofer. Following the instructions on this manual that's on the uh, cover, basically two of these wires are going to be for one door and the other two is going to be for the other door and one of them is going to be positive and the other one's going to be negative. Once I confirm that everything is connected and it works, we'll go for a more permanent uh, build uh, later. Now that I have temporarily tapped into the door speakers, we need to now find some 12 volt power to supply to the subwoofer. So now I'm going to go through the process of removing some of this trim so that we can access that 12 volt socket. This piece here is held together by some screws that can be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. In the Adventure series, there is a 12 volt cigarette socket on the right side which I will tap into. If your vehicle does not have this, you might need to go directly to the battery which could be located at the engine if you have a gas model or it is located in the cargo conveniently if you have the hybrid.
Next, we're gonna remove the rear right seat. I will skip through all of that step because I already have a video on it that you can watch. Now we go along the inside and remove some more trim. Now we're going to remove what Toyota calls the interior quarter panel trims. Uh, the first one is the one that holds the seat belt. Once we get that one removed, we'll be able to access the one that is hiding the 12 volt wire. This piece is only held in place by some trim holders. You have to kind of work your fingers behind and pull it out. I actually cut myself over here on something, I don't even know what. So now we're gonna remove the final piece. There's a screw over here that can be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. And then on the bottom there's a bolt we have to remove as well that's used for the um, cargo net accessory by Toyota. This last piece actually has a lot of clips that hold it in place, but I've removed it so many times that I broke the clip, so it's very easy for me to pop off. Don't worry about it, clips are cheap, you can buy it, you can replace it, not a problem. Before you remove the panel, make sure you unplug everything. Depending on the trim you have, you might have AC power, DC power, or wires that run to a light. This is the wire that contains our 12 volt power. We need to peel away the loom and tap into it with one of these T-tap connectors. You basically wrap the T-tap around the power wire and then you press down with some uh, pliers. With a spade connector, you can tap into it and then pull power through there. I will take a voltmeter and confirm that I do have power coming out of the connector. You can see we have 11.9 volts, so we do have a solid connection. This is the red power wire that came with our kit. I'm installing the spade connector that I will use to tap into the T-tap connector. Next, I'm going to connect my ground wire to this bolt that I found in the rear cargo. Off camera, I actually sanded this down so that the connection is more clean to the frame and not just to the paint. Okay, to summarize what we've done, we connected our 12 volt power to the cigarette socket that's in our back. I connected the ground wire to this bolt over here. From the subwoofer, we have our power wire and our remote wire connected to the 12 volt of the vehicle. This means that when the car turns on or it goes into accessory mode, the remote will tell the subwoofer to turn on because there's 12 volt power coming through there. When the car is off, the subwoofer will turn off and will not drain our battery. And then we have a bunch of speaker wires. You have uh, two for that door and then two for the other door. I have the wire scattered around because I'm only trying to show how the connections are made to the subwoofer from your RAV4.
And right now I connected everything, including the wire harness and the remote. We do have power. Um, my microphone did not pick up the bass, but there is definitely very nice bass. Now that we've connected everything and confirmed that it works, we're gonna now take our speaker wires and tap into the door speakers through the pillars. The plan right now is to have this wire run through this grommet. If we look at the Toyota diagram, the pillar number 12 is held in place by two trim holders number 13, which seems to be at the very bottom. This is the pillar we want to remove, so first thing we're going to do is remove that seat belt uh, bolt. This is the trim on the front seat. We just simply pull this up. I'm doing this one-handed, so you'll be able to do this two-handed no problem. There's no fancy clips holding this in place. To help remove the pillar, we're gonna remove the weather seals that will give us better access with pulling the trim off. We need to do this both on the back seat and the front seat. The pillar trim is easy to remove at the top and at the bottom there are trim holders in place so it might need to use some extra force. I actually did not expect to see pins that are used to connect the door wiring to the vehicle wiring. So this sort of changes the installation process completely for me. I actually tried to trace the wire to see which one would be the speaker, but I didn't have much uh, luck. There seems to be less wires going into the pillar than they are coming out. After doing some reading online, it turns out that these two wires here are actually used to send signal to the speakers. This information was found in the RAV4 World forums, if you want to check it out. Because in my build I'm going to install an amplifier, I am not going to connect into the door speakers. If you're not going to install an amplifier, you can go ahead and connect with no problem. My subwoofer is going to connect directly to the lines coming out of the head unit before it gets amplified through the amplifier. Make sure you subscribe so you can see that video coming up. The remote control wire runs from the cargo down to the front driver's seat, under it, and then into the center compartment over here. Because we can't install the styrofoam holder for our jacks, I located my jacks to the side over here with some towels to prevent some vibrations. Under the jack is the a uh, wrench or whatever it's called to lift the jack. I have some bungee cords here. I have my jumper cables are wrapped around the wheel. So overall, I'm not having to find new space for, for these items. The speaker wires are going under the panels and all the way to the front. The remote wire, same method, going to the driver's side. I have my power and ground over here where it's not being pinched and the power cable continues behind the panel to the cigarette socket where it gets its 12 volt power. If you have a hybrid, your battery would be located over here so you should be able to connect to it directly without any issues. This is your auxiliary battery, not your hybrid battery. So for fun, I was doing a comparison with how much it costs to do the JBL system upgrade by Toyota. It's apparently $1,600, but that also includes the, the junk navigation system. I've invested so far less than $300, which includes the dashboard speakers and the wire harness for those speakers, the subwoofer, and some of these connectors to uh, tap into the wires. This $300 does not include the door speakers or the amplifier because you can get really good music with just the subwoofer and dashboard speakers. 
I chose to get the spare tire subwoofer because I care about my cargo space a lot. I'm a big outdoor adventure person, so I need that cargo space to hold my gear. You can definitely get away with those box subwoofers that sit in the back cargo area. The installation process is gonna be exactly the same thing. So what I'm gonna actually do right now is get this microphone and clip it over here. And then I'm going to play a music that is from the YouTube library so I don't get no copyright infringement and we're gonna play it Bluetooth source um, my sound is gonna go all the way to the back so the sounds gonna come from the rear speakers and the subwoofer that's all the way in the back so I'm gonna turn this off so that sound is strictly from that sound is just coming from the door speakers I'm gonna turn up the bass and you'll see the difference it gets really loud for step-by-step -step instructions and pictures visit rav4gen5.com